the biblical truth of our hymns. And for live, I'm sorry, it's dark. We've got a storm coming. Praise the Lord. Today we're going to do Search Me, O God by James Edwin Orr. And let me open up this over here. Very interesting story here. And I gotta move it down a little. Um I'm just looking here. So um, the revival started throughout New Zealand. Dr. Orr reports that he was leaving New Zealand and four Aborigine, A-B-O-R-I-G-I-N-E girls approached and sang for him a beautiful Maorian. M-A-O-R-I, I apologize for not knowing these names, but M-A-O-R-I, Song of Farewell. So they sing this native song, Melody. <clears throat> Mr. Orb was so impressed with the beauty of this Polynesian melody that soon afterwards he wrote new verses to the tune on the back of an envelope. The text is based on the familiar word scriptures in Psalms 139, verses 23 and 24. Search me, O God, and know my heart, and try me, and know my thoughts, and see if there be any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way of everlasting. I've had to repent of sin, and I do. And this is one thing I, I, I do in my life. That we all need to do. We need to get alone off with God, and we need to ask God the who, what, where, why question. We need to ask God Am what I am doing pleasing you? Am I who I am for you? Am I where I am right now pleasing you? The why I am, is that according to what you want me, Lord? Who I am what I am, where I am, why I am. And if there's a when, it's something I do. When I, uh, mostly, when, you know, if I can't sleep in the middle of the night, I had it last night. For me, the ministries that God has me in, is that what you want me to do, Lord? Daytona Beach, Florida, is this where you want me? People get aggravated with me. Christians get aggravated with me because I preach the gospel. I have convictions that others don't have. I, I, I believe things are worldly and should not be done. Lord, is that what you want me to do? They don't like it. They are not so. But Lord, who would you have me to be? And the hymn starts off. Many people won't do that because they're afraid that God will show them. Listen, when I say, Lord, what sins are, are between you and me right now that's breaking our fellowship? God, I'm not going to say, but God will bring out three sins and one particularly right off the bat. I even finished guide off my tongue. And I, yep, Lord, I know. And I try to work on that, and sometimes I don't try to work on it. And there are other sins, which today I confess. But it says, search me, O God. Some are afraid because you, you know what God's going to find. And 
Some of it you may love or like or want to attach yourself or have attached yourself to God. Coming to yourself with your sins. You know that God is going to say no or God's going to say yes to your opposition. Search me, O oh God, is, is a wonderful, great statement that is found in the Bible. Lord, the good and the bad of my life, search me. What is the verse? I'm going to misquote it. I, I forgive me, Lord. But thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. With that light, search me, Lord. Uh, John chapter 3 says that those that are, are in darkness, those that rebel against Jesus Christ, they want to stay in the light. They don't want that light to magnify who they are. And know my heart today. Not your brain. Not your pocketbook. What is your heart? Now our heart, according to Jeremiah, is desperately wicked and evil. And Jesus said, out of the heart comes murder and adultery and sinful thoughts and sinful ways and sin. And we say, well, uh, in a cuss, where did that come from? That came from your heart. We don't need God researching our pocketbook and God we don't need to be God searching the inside of our car or in our pockets we need God to be searching our heart if you are trying to quit smoking and you are seriously praying about it and you are battling that sin now a person will look in your pocket and see the pack of cigarettes but they don't know the battle you're having with it. You can look at a congregation of people in the church and they look all happy and wonderful, but their heart, what, what's their heart doing at the moment things are going on? The face can lie to you the thoughts can lie but the heart cannot lie to God and yourself try me and I know James over there we're you know we're not uh, we are tempted when but try me and God does do that God will put things in our life and put our sin in our life to see see you've got a problem with that and again, see, you got a problem with that. You you got a you see you got a constant problem with that. Oh Lord, I know. And see, look, you got victory over it. You cannot do it when you go in the power of God. But when you get your eyes off me, then you let's well, see, look, you did it again. See, look, you got victory. That's what the trying. And it's not that I want you to sin. It's I want you to see the sin. And I want you to see, look, victory. I want you to see, look, uh, defeat. Oh, Savior, we're saved. Jesus Christ is our Lord, God, and Savior. And you're a Christian. You're washed in the blood. And you still sin. You still got victory. You still got defeat. And God search me. God look into my heart. God show me. I still got a problem with that. And yeah, we sin, but maybe if we ask God to search our heart, and maybe that moment we do sin, maybe it's not, I'm not saying we didn't sin, but maybe it's that moment that God say, see, look. Were you defeated or were you in victory? 
And God does leave into a Christian sins that, hey, you know what? I put fleas on a dog to remind that dog he's a he's a dog. I put that sin in your life to remind you you're a sinner. Don't you dare go raise yourself above anybody else because you're a sinner too. Their sins are not as wicked as yours for uh, for all sin have sin come short of glory of God. We must turn to our Savior. We don't go run into a psychiatrist. I'm not saying a psychiatrist. I mean, some people do medically need a psychiatrist. But do we run to the Savior first? Ought we go to the blood instead of a pill? Ought we go to Jesus on the cross instead of a bottle? Know my thoughts. Oh, there's the thoughts. The heart first. And the thoughts, that your thoughts come from your heart. See, a, a psychiatrist deals with the head, and the problem with what the Bible says is not the head, it's the heart. And what comes out of the head, what comes out of your thinking, must be dealt with through your heart, because that's the source. People will say, I'm going to follow my heart. That's the wrong thing to do. I pray. All right, do you pray? Lord, I need this. Lord, I need that. Lord, my neighbor. Lord, my mother. Lord, my son. Lord, the job. Lord, the, the bills. How about praying, search me, O oh God? Try that. Go off. Get somewhere alone, wherever you're alone, wherever your prayer closet is. And pray, say, Lord God, from your heart, search me. See if there be some wicked way in me, and there will be. I said, just, just today, I, I've sinned against the Lord God. And it bothers me. It's a sin, many, many years of sin. And it still bothers me. And at the moment, I'm doing it. And then afterwards, I can't go back and change it. Last night, I had a moment where I was just crying out to God, Lord, am I doing right? Lord, am I, even, am I saved? I'm not doubting my salvation, but is it under the Lord? Lord, am I doing? Am I going? Am I am where I am? Is everything right now in my life, my thoughts, are they pleasing you? Don't worry, he'll find some wicked in you. Last night, I mean, except for one of my sins, I'm not going to tell you what it is. Uh, Lord, I felt relaxed. I felt, as much as I was crying out, I felt things were right. About three hours ago, <laughs> there was a wicked way in me and I sinned. But many will not cry out to God, search me, O God, because they know. There is wickedness in them, and there may be a possibility that you enjoy that wickedness. Cleanse me. All right, now, God, you show me what you show me my sin. You show me the problem you tried and showed my sin in action. Cleanse me. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to, to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But you have got to repent. You have got to confess before God for him to cleanse and forgive you. That too has got to come from the heart. That too has got to come from a broken, contrite heart. Lord God, I've done it again. Oh, Lord God, I didn't. It, as you go on and grow in your Christian life and you stay in your Bible and you study your Bible, you're going to realize things you were doing. I never knew that was sin. And by your Bible reading, by you searching out God and, and going to church and doing what you're supposed to be doing and, and, and living for Christ, he'll reveal to you. And you don't have to ask and search it. He'll reveal to you, hey, you know, that's sin. I don't, I'm not pleased with that, God speaking. Cleanse me from every sin. 
and set me free. Free from what? Guilt. Free from shame. Free from it bothering you. And that sin may keep coming back in your life. I've done this sin over and over. It's it over and over has been under the blood. Today I, I put it under the blood. I hope there's not another time, but probably. I praise the Lord. Who gets the honor and the glory? Man or God? For cleansing my sin. Me from my sin. All right, when it comes from cleansing your sin, there's only one that can wash you of your sin. And it's not man, it's the man Christ Jesus. There is no sinful man, and all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, and man or woman, in any ministry, any religion, that can absolve you of your sin when they themselves are sinners. And when it comes to cleansings of sin, it's only by the blood of Jesus Christ. By you confessing your sin. Listen, if you don't confess your sins, you don't repent of your sin, they're not going to be cleansed. Fulfill thy word. If we confess our sins, he's faithful enough to cleanse us from our sins. He's faithful enough to... If we confess our sins, he is faithful enough to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's what the word says. If I confess my sins... God will forgive me my sin and he'll cleanse me. That's according to thy word. And make me pure within. I take sin A, B, C. I put sin A, B, C under the blood of Jesus Christ. God said, okay, I forgive you. And not only does God forgive me, 1 John 1, 9, but he also cleanses you. So A, B, C is now erased from my books. It should be erased from my conscience. And the devil said, well, you do A, B, C, or you do B, you do A, C, or you do B, C, or you do C. Whatever the, the devil comes up and says, hey, look what, no, 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 no. I'm sorry, Satan. But I confessed A, B, C, I confessed B, I confessed Z, I confessed A, and I confessed A. God has forgiven me, and God has cleansed me of those sins. They are no more. And when we confess our sins, and he forgives our sins, and he cleanses our sins, those sins ain't not going to show up at the judgment seat of Christ. The sins that will show up are the ones we did not confess. And that's why we must ask God, search me. Because we don't know when the time of our departing may happen. I may be while doing this video right now. I may be in the process. I may die while doing this video. I may die after this video. The rapture may happen. I am to confess my sins to be right with God and to be clean before God. So when I get access to be absent from the body and present with the Lord or, or my name is called by the rapture. You know, has there ever been a time in our lives where we were absolutely clean of all our sins? And had we gone to heaven at that moment? We would not have no wood or hay or stubble. Absolutely. For me, it was April 25th, 1987. When I knelt down, when you, when you, however you knelt, sat, laid down, whatever you did, at the moment we called upon Jesus Christ, we were without sin at that moment. Then later on, Saturday afternoon, I got up. And I don't know what the first sin I, I had done, but maybe thought, maybe lit up a cigarette. I was smoking that time. Maybe I, I, I got mad at somebody. I cussed or whatever it was. But April 25th for me, 1987, in the afternoon, I don't know what time it was. There was a moment that I confessed my sins. And I came to Jesus and I was washed. 
Can we get that back? I, if we go to God right now and say, God, search me. God, show me all my sins. And God shows me all the sins that are not recorded. All the sins, I mean, all the sins that are recorded. All the sins that I have not confessed. All the sins he has not forgiven me. All the sins he has not cleansed me. And I repent of those sins by God searching me. If I were to be absent from the body and present with the Lord, if the rapture were to happen, there would be no wood, hair, or stubble as far as my sins because I asked God to search me. I confessed. He forgave me. And he cleansed me. That's how I am assured. That's how much assurance I have when I confess my sins before God. Now, there's also a confession before God that, oh, God, I'm sorry. And we don't mean it. I don't believe that confession. You don't really, it does not come from the heart. And I, I don't know what degrees there are, but there may be sometimes we confess a sin and we don't, we're doing it half heartedly. It may not be cleansed, it may not be forgiven. But I don't know what the standard there is. Fill me with fire where once I burned with shame. Remember, he said, set us free before. Well, now we're free. He's removed the shame. Put a fire in there. And I don't mean baptism of the, holy, of the fire. I mean, that's hell. I'm talking about put a fire. All right, now we got rid of the sin. Let's, instead of sinning, let's go tell someone about Jesus. Instead of sinning, let me read three more chapters. Instead of sinning, let me, let me sing to the Lord a hymn. Instead of, oh, here we go. I don't know if you heard that. Instead of, of, of sinning, or instead of having that, that shame of that sin, let me something for the Lord. Grant me desire to magnify thy name. There is no other name given amongst men whereby you must be saved. That name is the name of Jesus Christ. Lift up Jesus. When I street preach Saturday morning, it's Jesus, 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 Jesus. Not my name. I heard a street preacher the other day, uh, my name, they don't, it's not about your name, shut up. Lift up the name of Jesus. Lord, take my life. Oh, you know, not only you're asking God to search, search you, find out what's wrong with you. You know, you got a car, you bring it to the auto mechanic, say, sir, you know, I hear something, or there's a rattling, or something's not right and that mechanic will take all his tools and everything he mechanicizes to look at that car and find out what's wrong with that car that's what we're asking god to do god here i am i'm a 1968 uh model lord put me into the garage put me up on that lift and check me out do i need oil do i need this do i need this now, lord look me up now lord take my life and that doesn't mean death i've done this many times i've done this the other night in church lord if you want me isaiah it said who shall go for us isaiah's like take me i'll go i'll go for you it's where you're where you're telling the lord search me find find something wrong with me find out if i'm good i mean and now, not only that, Lord, I want you to use me. That may be, maybe, maybe means you, you got to move. You got to go somewhere else. You got to get a new circle of friends. You may have to get a new job. You can't do that no more. You're going to do this now. You got to change your whole time, what you do with your time. And make it, my life, wholly thine. We can't give God half of me. Some people think, well, God, I give you Sunday morning. Is that, is that enough? No, nope. we got to give God Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, 24 hours. If you're not giving God 24 hours of every day, the, the, five, the seven days of the week, that's not holy. 
fill my poor heart. And there's that heart again. Why is it poor? Because it's wretched. It's miserable. It's sin. It displeases God. We ask God to know our heart today. Fill, fill my poor heart with thy great love divine. And when God fills your heart with love, you're going to be given holy to God and say, Sir, do you, do you know where you're going to go when you die? All right. I got a magazine. No, you know what? Put the magazine away. Let me get my Bible. Uh, you know what? That television program, that's filthy. That radio station, no more. I want the Bible. I want the old-fashioned hymns. I want church. I want preaching. I want teaching. I want to tell people about Jesus. I want to live for God. If I can't sleep, I'm going to pray for people at church. If I can't sleep, I'm going to pray for people in my neighborhood. If I can't sleep, I'm going to pray for my family. I'm going to pray for my co-workers. I'm going to have a new attitude at work. I am not going to fuss and gripe, complain openly. I'm going to do it to myself now. I'm going to keep it amongst myself. But I'm going to be cheerful and I'm going to give my job and my work for the Lord. That's God's love divine. When people begin to look at you like, whoa, what, what what happened with you? Take all my will. Again, I say not half, all. My passion, what do I love? What I love, does it please, it doesn't please God? You mean, I, I, I love the, the, for my children to play baseball, um, but... Uh, I, we can't have the baseball because it's midweek service. All right, goodbye, baseball. And we're going to sit as a family in the church midweek service. I am going to give up my bowling fees or my expensive coffee, and I'm going to give that money to a missionary. With tithing to the church and the bible says as far as tithing i'm going to give money to the church happily i'm going to be excited about giving money to god and you know what there are going to be times i'm going to give money i'm not 10 percent, 20 30 but i don't know i'm just going to take what's in my wallet and, and there you go that's all the will and my passion. I know all the men that play on that sports team, but I can't name 12 of the apostles. Something wrong. I can name all the, the actors and actresses in that movie or television program, but I don't know the 12 tribes of Israel. My passion is wrong. So, it's not about me, and that will be the biggest battle you will ever have within yourself. <laughs> because your self is going to come out. My self comes out all the time. And you got to tell self, hey, you're dead. You got a problem with sin. You are not making God happy. Shut up. I don't like that hymn. Shut up and sing it. This mess is getting bored. Shut up and listen. I don't want to get up and go to church. I want to shut up and get up. And pride. Pride is a sin. I'm proud to be American. I'm proud to work here. Uh, pride is a sin, and you got to confess it, and you got to stop it. I now surrender. I'm giving, Lord, I give up. Here's the white flag. I'm done. I am done with my passion. I am done with my will. I am done with self. I am done with pride. I want to live for you. And Lord, 
I got to frequently say, search me because I'm still a sinner. And Lord, though I give you my all today, tomorrow my all may not. Sorry, don't want to do that. And you're going to be in a constant battle once you say, Lord, I give you my all. Because your all is going to be, uh-uh, not today. And once he start off, search me, oh God, know my heart today. Paul said, that I would do, I don't. That which I don't do, I do. Paul had that struggle. Uh, now, now I surrender, Lord, in me abide. Now, we already get the Holy Spirit when we're saved, when we're adopted. But you know what we're telling that Holy Spirit that dwells with us? You're in charge. You've been in there the whole time. I've been living for self. I've been taking care of self. Uh, Holy Spirit, do a work. Make me grow. Make me pleasing. Make me a vessel of honor. That when I do sin as I have sinned, Lord, Holy Spirit, Father, Jesus, Savior, bleed my heart because I've sinned against you. And help me. Oh, Holy Spirit, don't forget about the Holy Spirit. We, you know, we Baptists, we forget about the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit that inspires us. You know, it is God and not your preacher that teaches you. My preacher is good. No, he's not. My Sunday school teacher. No, he's not. It's the Holy Spirit inspiring and putting into the heart and the lips of that man that's coming into your ears, that's coming into your heart. That preacher, that teacher, me, me right now, all I am is a vessel. And the Holy Spirit, if, the Holy, if, you, if you've been something about this, it, it, it's turned you to God. It's not Stiley Hayward. It's the Holy Spirit. Don't, don't worship me. Oh, Holy Spirit. Revival comes from thee. I thought revival comes. We're going to have the great preachers come this week. We're going to have a great conference. We're going to have a great Bible revival. And many don't pray. But we're going to, and many don't have to pray. They don't full heartedly pray. I remember I was in the church. And there'd be things in the church, which, nothing wrong. The church would fast together. We're going to fast uh, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday for a revival. Friday afternoon, we're all going to meet at this restaurant. We're going to have a meal. Uh, I thought you said Friday. You only gave Friday half a day. Have the meal on Saturday. Do you talk to the Holy Spirit? He is the member of the Trinity. He is God too, you know. I know he's not to be exalted, but Jesus said that the, the Comforter will, will reveal into us and bring to remembrance the life of Jesus. Holy Spirit, remind me today of Jesus. Speak to me about Jesus. And the revival comes from the Holy Spirit. Send the revival. Send it. Call in the preachers. Call in. Start the work in me. We all think that the revival is going to start within the church house. The revival can start at a grocery store. The revival can start at work. The revival can start in your living. The revival is when you have God entirely, surrender to God entirely, and God is using you to work in someone's life. God is revi reviving in me to you of all the things. If any of these videos 
or any of the street preaching or any of the gospel track or anybody get saved or anybody I deal with get, want to get right and do right. That's a revival. But you see, the church house is, the revival is everybody gets right. Everybody's bringing money. Everybody's coming to the altar. Everybody. And then next week, after the revival is over, you have less attendance Sunday morning than you had attendance two weeks ago. Everybody was weeping and boo-hooing at the altar. We had a great revival. 23 people were saved. 14 people rededicated their lives. And people cried and families came up. We all bowed down. We all prayed together. And then next Sunday morning, the crickets come to church and nobody does. Friend, that wasn't a revival. That was a movie prayer. Oh, it was a great movie. It was a great show. It was a great time. Yay! It didn't last, did it? Thy word. Oh, the word. Declares. Thou will supply our need. Not want. Need. And the basic needs that God supplies for us is air, water, and food. And when God's all done with you and your life is over, whether you've been faithful or not, God takes the spirit from us and it goes back to him. Ecclesiastes, I forget which chapter. Man saved or lost, his spirit goes back to God. His body goes to the grave and his soul goes to heaven or hell. For blessings, make you happy. That's what blessings mean. For blessings now. God may give you things to make you happy. Praise him for it. I have a need. It's a want. And it would deeply, greatly satisfy and make me happy. And Lord, provide a wife. Oh Lord, I humbly plead. I put myself down. I come to you as a sinner that I am. I am deeply touched by my sins that I have offended you. You know, today we got a big thing. You offended me. I, I, I'm offended. But we're not offended against God. We don't realize that we offended a holy, righteous God. And before that holy and righteous God, we don't say, search me, O God. Because we're afraid what God will find. And we were afraid that once God finds it, uh, we're afraid that God may say, that's got to go. Look at, uh, look at Abraham with Ishmael. Ishmael was caught uh, insulting, uh, picking on Isaac and, and Sarah, type of the Holy Spirit, comes and says, Hey, Ishmael's got to go. You got to get rid of that boy. And God spoke to Abraham and said, Yep, he's got to go. Search me, O oh God. Okay, Ishmael's got to go. Search me, O oh God. You got to get a new job. Search me, O oh God. A little bit more of that money needs to be mine. Search me, O oh God. Your time is not my time. Search me, O oh God. I don't like that hobby. Search me, O oh God. I don't like the people you're hanging out with. Search me, O oh God. I don't like the language you're speaking. Search me, O oh God. Those jokes are, are they're, they're terrible. Search me, O oh God. I'm not pleased with that radio station. Search me, O oh God. You spend more time with political things than you do with holy things. Search me, O oh God. Where were you midweek service? Search me, O oh God. Why do you love things more than you love your wife? Search me, O oh God. Why do you spend time doing that and you don't spend any time with your children? Search me, O oh God. And then, Lord, take my life. And that's not death. This is a remarkable, wonderful, great hymn. And I, I went, I saw the title and I couldn't remember. I, it's been a long time since I sung this hymn. 
And there are modern singers out there, and they destroyed the hymn. They had destroyed. I mean, not the, the words of this. They just destroyed it. And I have, there's two search meal gods here. And one, the music is from that Maori, M-A-O-R-I, traditional melody. Then over here on the right-hand page, music by Ellers. Ellers, Edward John Hopkins. I bet you that don't sound like this. Let's stick with the original. 